Okay, you guys, welcome to a new video. I want to do like a full-fledged disclaimer that everything I'm about to say in this video is 100% truth. La, your la. Oh. So I am going to be reacting to a video that points out my inconsistencies. Sorry. I feel like it's important that I make this video to help you guys understand why it may be hard to believe things I say because of my inconsistencies. Like, trust me, I would not be sitting here making this video if I was just gonna sit here and ignore what's being said or gaslight in any way or make excuses any in any way. I have huge fears making this video that people literally are just gonna believe what they want and they're not gonna listen to what I'm saying. I also have huge fears that people are just gonna say excuses, excuses, excuses. I'm afraid that me making this video even though it's all pure good intentions, I really just want a better relationship with my audience. But let's begin. So the first clip here, as we can see, um, is of this website that I go on where you guys can ask me questions. And someone asked if YDHB made a compilation of all the times we think you lied, would you watch it and address the issues? And I said, I'd only do that if the video was short, straight to the point, wasn't condescending or assumption based. I don't want it to be rude, biased, or catering to her audience. Her audience dislikes me and judges my every move. We're gonna turn this up as high as it goes and we're gonna press play. Yes, I am not editing Lynn, so we are sticking to the good old fashioned. Let's react from a laptop. So let's go. Because when you ask next time why people don't believe you, it's because of the track record. We build our future and current reputation based on the past actions. And so even if it was a few years back or 10 years back, it still needs addressing because that's why people are having doubts today. I agree with her to an extent. I do believe that people can change. They can learn from their mistakes. Even opinions that I had a couple weeks ago are different than opinions I have now. I don't think, like, I want to be completely honest in this video, but I feel like I don't have room to grow. I feel like I've gone through so many eras and I try to like disappear from YouTube for a little bit and then I'll come back and like a new person because I'm trying. I feel like there's been so many times where I have tried to change, whether that be my content to make it more suitable for you guys. But I do believe that if you make a mistake in the past, you should explain yourself. And if it's something that is offensive or anything along, along that like family of things, you should apologize. You should own up to it. So I do get it. I am bipolar. I have known for a very long time without actually being diagnosed that I am bipolar. Without actually being diagnosed. Okay, so this is a tweet that I made in 2013. Okay, well, I'll just read the whole thing. It says, I don't just say I'm bipolar to say it. I was diagnosed at a young age. Also, depression, anxiety disorder, and OCD. And then the clip you just saw was from two years ago. Okay, so when I was younger, I did see so many therapists, counselors, it's because I had to. Um, being in foster care, like, Nine times out of ten, like, therapy is almost, like, obligated. It's your choice if you want to sit there and talk or just, like, sit there and stare at the wall. And during that time, I was uh, told that I showed signs of being bipolar. So I think at a young age, because I think I was, like, 15 or 16, when I was told, you know, you show signs of bipolar, you probably are, I took that, ran with it, and from that point on, I was like, oh, diagnosed with bipolar. I'm wrong for that because I was not diagnosed with bipolar. They said that I could have bipolar, that I showed signs of being bipolar. That doesn't mean that I am bipolar. So I am wrong for that. Um, as for me, truly, truly being diagnosed with bipolar, it was in that clip where I was wearing the blue dress. It was the first time that I have ever been diagnosed. So my fault. And I do feel dumb about it. Honestly, I really do. I feel dumb about taking what the therapist said when I was like 15, 16 and running with it. I feel dumb about that. So in this clip, I did speak about, or I hope I did, I'm pretty sure I did because this was an update after I went to a weight loss doctor, which I was going because like I wanted to talk about weight loss surgery. Uh, I'm sure she watched the whole thing, but I don't know why she didn't put it in here. Um, I did mention then and in other videos that the weight loss doctor said I should get weight loss surgery, but he said that I would lose weight slower if I got weight loss surgery. So he didn't think it was a good fit for me. Like I literally left the appointment with zero weight loss surgery information nothing he just wanted me to go on this specific diet um and that was it like, i really want to make this video and i want it to be sincere and i just want to explain myself the best that i can you know the meeting started with you need weight loss surgery ended with i think you'd be better off without it because you'd lose weight quicker i don't understand i didn't understand and i still don't understand but that is the truth so this is two completely different stories that happened at two completely different times at two completely different restaurants. So here we were going to the Cheesecake Factory. So 
I'm pretty sure I vlogged like the whole thing, but in this clip, we went to the Cheesecake Factory where the waitress did call Becky a he. Here in this, we were at Golden Corral where Becky was up getting, why am I saying Becky? What do you guys think about that? <laughs> oh shit, I have too many exes. Oh my God. Uh, okay, anyways, okay. I'm sorry, Becky. I'm sorry, Destiny. Okay, I'm sorry, anyone who's offended. This, okay, let's start this over. We went to Cheesecake Factory here where she was called a he. Um, we went to Golden Corral here where Destiny went up to get more food and I was still sitting at the um, table, obviously. And the waitress was calling Destiny an it. And I was just like taken aback. So these are two separate situations. Um, regarding the he story, that actually happens a lot with Destiny. I don't know if it still does. Like I haven't seen her in forever. Um, but again, two separate stories, two separate times, two separate restaurants. Someone asked, why didn't you disclose your Amazon affiliate? That video is going to get demonetized. I replied with, I didn't realize I had to do that. So thanks for letting me know. Oh, this has been a big topic and I feel, I literally have felt so dumb about this whole thing that I completely have taken my links, like there's no links in the description below anymore and I don't want to feel like I'm just trying to get all this money and that's why I shop at Amazon. So it's not like that at all. I truly didn't realize that I had to do that and that's my fault. That is 100% my fault. It's my fault for not being responsible enough to understand what the heck an Amazon affiliate is. So again, my fault, 100%. I'm sorry, I do apologize. I was not trying to deceive you guys in any way wholeheartedly because if I knew I had to say that I would have had no problem saying it I didn't know because I didn't do the full research that I should have but then once you guys told me because I do have a few videos scheduled that are already filmed and ready for you guys I've really been enjoying uploading every other day it's actually really fun for me and I like to be a little bit ahead so I can continue doing so because there are days where I have mental health days and I just don't want to talk about myself I don't want to pull out the camera while so many other people don't which makes me very sad because I feel like mental health days it, it, whether you have a career or just a job or whatever it may be i feel like those are just as important as like days where you are physically sick and can't go to work um which makes me sad because it needs to just be a law <laughs> it really truly does because anxiety and depression can be very crippling i just wish people would have understood that it was a mistake told me about it so i could fix it and then we could move on i feel like the way people have treated me regarding it has been a little harsh and i feel like i want to listen to your guys's criticism i want to accept it and absorb it but it's hard when I feel attacked. Whether you guys are choosing to attack me or you guys feel like I'm not attacked, it's a feeling that I have and something that I have learned recently in um, therapy, which I actually haven't been, I need to, I need to message her. But um, so when I sit here and tell you guys, I felt like I was attacked because I made a mistake. It was a bad mistake. I should have done more research. I just felt super attacked and kind of like, oh my God, it made me feel like really, like my chest was heavy. I was like, oh my God, what do I do? How do I fix this? Like it honestly scared me for a minute because it makes me feel like I have to walk on eggshells. Like every little tiny thing that I do, whether it's a mistake or something, people are gonna like report me to YouTube and stuff. And I'm just like over here like, it was an accident. Okay, I'm gonna go back just so I can, I can point. So this is one of my um, recent doctor visits where I talk about how like the doctor mentioned like exercising and my weight. And I thought that was really cool because, well, I mentioned my weight first, I'm gonna be honest. She asked me, why don't you exercise? And I said, because I don't like to and I'm lazy. I was completely honest about that. And she was like, you need to exercise. Her saying that, which a doctor, from my remembrance, from my memory, which is so bad, I have so many holes in my memory, it, it honestly terrifies me. That is a whole other subject. She says, I show signs of PTSD. Showing signs of PTSD from childhood does not mean I have PTSD. She said that that is something she wants to talk about in the future. I told you guys I stopped outpatient, but I told you guys that I want to keep a psychologist, and I still have to talk to her about that. I'm just really hoping that she'll still will be... Uh, my psychologist and i still haven't messaged her so i need to do that but it's something i need to do so uh the holes the memory problems very ptsd um i'm not saying that i have it i believed in myself right here until i saw this clip and this is the part where okay i don't want to get emotional but this is the part where i'm like how do i not remember what i say <laughs> like how do i not remember the experience that i went through I remember this was the doctor that I saw that I actually really, really liked. She liked sang and she was fun. She was quirky. Like, I really, really loved her. Um, she just made you feel like you've been best friends forever. She did come in. She did tell me you're healthy, but you're, she actually said overweight. She didn't even say obese. I like literally exaggerated here. <laughs> of course I did. Am I right? But um, she said, yeah, you're healthy, but you're overweight. And that's all she left it as. Um, I have this like health portal situation where you can like message your doctor if you want, whatever it may be. I actually don't use it anymore, um, but I did when I was seeing this doctor and I messaged her. I messaged her and I asked her about Octavia and she was like, I haven't heard of it, but give it a try. You know, anything will help. So I think it was a few months later, I went in for another visit and that is when she mentioned the weight loss group because I was like, as a doctor, do you have any advice of what I can do to lose weight? And she told me 1500 calories, lower your carbs. That is what she told me because I asked her. I, I guess when I say no doctors ever talked about my weight, 
I think it's because I want them to literally look me in the face and say that you're dying. And I believe that was true until I saw this. I saw this clip and I was like, damn, that did happen. How did I forget? I literally forgot. This was during my whole cancer situation. There's a lot of stuff that happened during that that I don't remember. So seeing this clip brought back a few memories and a few things that happened and that was said. Um, so this is true and this is not true based on my memory. It's because honestly, I feel dumb. I feel dumb nine times out of 10. Like so many of you ask me like, do you have learning problems? Like do you have disability? Like what's wrong with you? I don't know. <laughs> and that's putting it lightly. Okay. This is not a pity me video. We ain't crying. So you have sleep apnea. Why did you say you didn't? Thank you for the super chat. And honestly, I have never been tested. So I can't say if I do or not. Afterwards, they told me that I do have sleep apnea. This is actually, Right after I got a DNC, I was put to sleep for the first time in my whole life because I was rushed to the ER. Uh, trigger warning, <laughs> blood all over the hospital floor, the ER room. It was the scariest experience of my life. And during that, um, after I woke up from the DNC, they told me that I did stop breathing. And they said, that's probably because you have sleep apnea. I have never been tested, so I can't say if I do or not, was what I said here, which was after this so i can understand why people are confused so the reason why i answered this way is because i had a hysterectomy one of the main questions i wanted to ask um, after my surgery was did i stop breathing i asked and the surgeon said i did not stop breathing not one time and the surgeon actually said how amazing and perfect it went and it made me feel so good because before surgery i was literally terrified you have no idea i was like oh my god i thought it literally was my last day of life i was like how am i gonna survive this one surgeon said i stopped breathing another one said i didn't i took the one that said i didn't and i ran with it i need tested that's clear as ever morbidly obese very common to have sleep apnea it's just easier for me to say i've never been uh, i've never been tested so i don't know so it's easier which is the truth to say that i have not been tested so i don't know so i can see how that's like an inconsistent um answer but at the time that was my truth and when i do get tested I will more than likely tell you guys the results. This is an Instagram Q&A that I did. I said, I bought the rings, Becky didn't. So this was made after the breakup and this was after the engagement. I, uh, sorry, I'm getting emotional because I know exactly what I'm about to say. I'm just scared. So this was the live stream. I'm pretty sure where I announced that I'm engaged, um, where I talked about it a lot. I don't want Becky mad at me. So Becky, if you see this, I love you as a person. But I need to be honest because this is what this video is about. If we could fight, um, I will fight you. I lied here. I wanted to protect Becky. Becky and I agreed that we would say that she bought the engagement rings. A lot of people were saying, oh, Becky used Amberlynn's money to propose, da, da 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 I didn't want people to think that. I also, selfishly, I will say that selfishly, didn't want people to think that I bought my own ring. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I... Lying's lying. That's like a point blank period on that regard. Some lies are to protect yourself or to protect the people around you. We were protecting ourselves from judgment. And it's wrong. It's wrong. People call me a liar all the time. And... This right here isn't gonna help. I will say that there are a lot of things that people say I've lied about that I have not. I have not at all. This is again, the question website. If you could instantly learn any language, which one would it be? Someone asked me. I said, I would love to be fluent in sign language. So this video, I remember this video actually, we were living with Destiny's mom and I had a really big like scab on my arm and people were like calling me diabetes Lynn, diabetes Lynn diabetes wound Lynn <laughs> like people were saying I had diabetes and I was getting wounds from it a lot of people were and as you guys know I actually pick my skin I have excoriation which is part of the OCD family so I made this video talking about like I have like forms of OCD I do nowhere near as bad as some people so I'm not saying that at all um but I do do some OCD things I do and um one of the worst ones is picking my skin it literally can't stop <laughs> I hate it more than anything so yeah, in this video, I was talking about how when I was in a group home, this weird OCD thing started. Um, I don't know. Can you call it OCD? I don't know. I'm not going to like diagnose myself <laughs> or the situation, but I would do this thing where I would sign language with letters, the alphabet, what people would say, and I would do it like next to my leg. And I literally couldn't stop. And if I didn't do it, it almost felt like I was going to combust. If I could speak any language, that would be it. I want to be able to sign 
sign language is beautiful like it's so beautiful i love watching people sign um i i, I kind of want to take a class let's be real um i can see the confusion kind of but in this video i did say the only thing i know how to sign is the alphabet that is it i don't know anything else so that's what i meant um just like spanish i can count to 10 in spanish doesn't mean i'm fluent um i can also count to 10 in japanese and it doesn't mean i'm fluent so i think that's where the confusion came from i learned how to do sign language a b c d e i learned how to do that when i was see right there i said i learned how to do the alphabet i didn't i, I don't know anything else i wish i did oh my god okay so let's move on to the next one so oh hi girlfriend uh, why are both of these people labeled as my girlfriend and have different height and shoulder width? Wait, what? This is all the same person. Um, here you can see that she is like, she is like holding me like this and she's leaning down. So that's what she's doing here. And then here she is like bent over this way instead of like this, which does make you shorter. When you go like this versus like this, it's clear that I look a little shorter. Um, here... Yeah, you can see that, well, at least I can because I know her. Um, she's actually taller than what this line says. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Because how young, dumb, <laughs> how young, dumb honey bun, it's so hard to say sometimes, um, did this. It looks like you made her face like this tall. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to be funny, but it really looks like that. Because here is actually some of her hair. So, all the same person. This is all the same person. I, I have nothing else to say about it. Um... That's the truth. I don't have anyone else living with me. I have not had anyone else in the vlogs. Um, this is it. This is her. This was from an Instagram Q&A. Uh, they said, will you ever acknowledge that your hate is more about the lies and manipulation than your weight? I replied with no, because I have a lied and I'm not manipulating anyone. I can't acknowledge something that isn't true. I do gaslight my audience. Who freaking cares? Okay, here it says gaslighting is a form of manipulation that often occurs in abusive relationships. It is a covert type of emotional... I'm sure abuse would be the next word. So when I said this here, I was being dramatic. I was being so dramatic. I actually am not gonna sit here and say I've never gaslighted you guys because that's not okay to say. If you guys have felt gaslit, then I have gaslit because I'm not gonna take away the way you feel or the way you say or see things. And I don't mean to ever, ever manipulate you guys or gaslight you guys. So right now I'm just going to apologize. I don't ever want that to be a thing anymore. I wish it would have never even happened in the past. So I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart, truly, because I know how it feels to be gaslit. It's not okay. It makes you feel kind of crazy. Yeah, so I'm sorry. What happened with the doctor's diet competition? I thought you were very excited to start that on January 1st. And I said, what are you even talking about? I actually don't know what this is from. I don't know what either of these from. Someone else asked me, did your doctor invite you to, uh, to one? I guess they're talking about a support group. And I said, no, she didn't invite me to a support group. This was the same time that that doctor that sings, that's the best way to describe it for you guys. Um, this was the same time where I went in and I asked her like about how should I lose weight? Um, and she said low carb, 1500 calories. Um, this is when she thought of this idea um, for me to come in and to weigh myself. Here, I think I'm understanding it more. What happened with the doctor's diet competition? I said, what are you talking about? Because it was never supposed to be a competition. I was talking about support groups on this website. So then someone replied and said, did your doctor invite you to one? I'm trying to just like paint the picture better for you guys because I'm confused. I don't want you guys to be confused. Oh, wait, down here. It says, why don't you join a support group for weight loss? Oh, okay. So I must have answered that. And then someone said that, which in my response was, she didn't invite me to a support group. I, I didn't really consider at the time, uh, me coming to weigh myself and having some of the people at the office weigh themselves. I did not at the time consider that a support group, but now that I hear more about it and I'm more rational, um, it does make more sense that it is. They're telling me, I want you to be part of the weight loss journey and competition within my office meant. Oh shit. I said competition, but she didn't say competition. I feel like maybe sometimes in the past, I exaggerated things to make them seem more better in a way. I honestly don't know, but it wasn't supposed to be a competition. It was supposed to be support. Oh, okay. Why is your mistreatment of Becky justified by a broken heart and you being so upset because she took the chance at a life together away from you when you've admitted you felt nothing? did not want a life together, was not happy, had to fake excitement, and felt trapped in a cage. I'm gonna be honest, the breakup was confusing. I went through a lot of different stages. Um, anger, relief, sadness, depression, happiness, hope. I went through it all. My broken heart, my anger, the resentment, whatever it may be, does not justify the way that I treated Becky. 
it doesn't. I have apologized to her in person. I've apologized to her in text. I've apologized to her on FaceTime. I have done a lot of apologies because Becky is a good person with a fucking good heart and it is what it is. I, I was mean, I was because I was mad. And when I get mad, I get irrational. I say things I don't mean that I have talked to my psychologist about. And she explained, and with trauma-based people, especially like childhood trauma, um, a lot of people fight instead of flight. My fight is kind of mean. I do and did really, really, truly love Becky. Um, it's just once the initial fear of the breakup was gone and the initial pain and the initial change and the initial shock, I was able to really, really <laughs> reflect on how I truly felt and my feelings and I felt horrible. I am very apologetic. I feel really bad. I still do to this day because what's on the internet stays on the internet. I do not care that what I said per se is on the internet because of me. What I care about is that's going to be on the internet forever. And Becky kind of has to deal with that. She has to deal with her ex <laughs> kind of bashing her. I'm just sorry. Like Becky, if you're watching this, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. And you know, I love you as a person. Becky was strong enough to end the relationship when I wasn't, and that's the truth. And what do you guys think about it? It just hurt and shocked me. But again, not justified. And I'm sorry. Apathetic said, so I was struck for eight videos, uh, leading to three copyright strikes. Uh, I submitted a counter to you to who then reviews it before they will send it to. Okay. Yeah, I did feel bad. I think I, I think at one point, um, I even told Apathetic, I said, if you make a new YouTube channel, because I thought their channel was down for good and I felt bad. But in the emails, I literally told them that if you make a new YouTube channel, I will literally shout you out in my videos. So people know that you have a new YouTube channel so that my audience can go find you because my audience watches you. So I genuinely felt bad. I promise you without a doubt, I was not trying to get their channel taken down. I was trying to get those videos taken down. And I said, you're also taking viewers and money away from me. Yes. So I've, I do believe that two things can definitely happen at once. Three things, five things, 12 things can happen at one time. Um, I did want those videos taken down. So that is one reason why I did it. And the word also, I feel like might be important. I'm not trying to be petty. I'm just trying to explain myself. I'm sorry. Um, I said, you're also taking viewers and money away from me, which is true, which is also another reason why I wanted those videos down. Um, I just noticed that Apathetic Facts wasn't editing them as much, like at all. Um, and I didn't like it. I just didn't. So I still stand by that. I did not like it. But all this is, is just me simultaneously, sim that word, oh my God, simultaneously, simultaneously, sim oh my goodness. This is just me saying that there was more than one reason for why I wanted those videos down. Please do not upload my full video to your channel. And yeah, that's all it is. I literally just did not want my full video on there. Um, if it was only about how wrong it is to upload your whole video, then why later say it was about money and views? I said also, <laughs> because it was, it was about both. If you did not want their channel taken down, why strike multiple times? Why not copyright claim instead or strike a couple times as a warning? Why seven or eight times when three are needed for termination? This goes back to my dumb self. I did not know this. I did not know that channels get taken down with a certain amount of strikes. I did not know that. That is my fault. I wanted to strike, strike, strike because I thought per copyright strike, it's just the video will be taken down. And the reason why I thought that is because I have been copyrighted in the past, unfortunately. I just deleted the video. I, I literally thought that's just what happens. And I apologize. I'm very glad they got their channel back because I don't want to take away someone's full-fledged income. I just want it to be fair. And I did not feel like it was fair. That's all. Uh, someone said, how do you feel about losing the throne to Chantel? I said, Chantel's amazing. I made sure to polish it before handing it over. I feel like I know what this is about. <laughs> Chantel knows, we know, I know that what she said was horrific. <laughs> it was. I have no excuses for her. I disagreed with everything she said. I was as shocked as you guys were. I honestly still am. I'm just like, damn. Because when I drink, I'm like emotional and like really sweet, really. I like, I've never been like an angry drunk. Um, That shocked me. Like the thing she was saying was like super offensive. My only answer is I don't want to believe that that's who she is. I want to believe that she is a good person, that she's an amazing person. Um, and that's honest. That's just me being honest. So the reaction is over. It was hard. This is a long video. I have a lot of editing to do, but I think it'll be worth it. Hopefully you guys can understand me more. Again, I just apologize for ever 
making you guys feel deceived or gaslit or manipulated. It's like never my intention to do those things. And I think that's like what sucks is because I do shit that I don't intend. And then it just turns into this big old thing, but it's ultimately my fault. And I'm sorry. And I can just like only learn from this. But a lot of you nitpick a lot that I do say, etc. So I do know that that's just going to come with the territory. It's just like I want criticism and constructive criticism. Um, that makes sense. I just feel attacked a lot. Like that's ultimately how I feel. But then there's just like this nitpicking that is just so hard and it's so, it's like loud. It's so noisy and loud. And I feel like the, the best way I can describe this in a metaphor is like the true constructive criticism just sounds like little tiny whispers and constant nitpicking, constant like body shaming and like fat jokes and just like downright cruelty is loud, screaming, like the loudest concert you've ever been to. Like, it's hard to hear and see the support and the true criticism that I need to be seeing um, because I can't hear you guys. I can't find you guys. I, it's a mess. It's jumbled. I, I'm trying though. I really am. And that's all I can do from this point on is just try. There's a two-way street. I feel like as a unit, if we want this to work, I feel like we all need to respect each other. I'll be the one to start. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in my videos. Um, I'm just going to continue with the vlogs. I'll probably do more reactions because I kind of do enjoy them. And I'm going to continue being me. I'm going to try to wake up every day with a positive mind frame, which I've been trying to do. And I noticed that it actually works. <laughs> so, yeah. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. I'm always trying to see through your flaws. Because I know that you got so much more to give. You made a real mess, but I miss you though. Because I can go to sleep when I'm alone. Again.